all this stuff is temporary. Money, success, even life is temporary. Jesus, that's eternal. And that's it? That's it. That's what we're going with. I'm Professor Radisson. This is Philosophy 150. This semester, I propose that we refuse to waste our limited time together debating the existence of the big man in the sky. Fill in the papers I've just given you with three little words. God is dead. I can't do what you want, I'm a Christian. We've got your results back. You have cancer. The answer's simple, drop the class. I like it's something that God wants me to do. I can't just turn away from it. Somehow. You really should go see Mom. What's in it for me? If you cannot bring yourself to admit that God is dead, then you will need to defend the antithesis. My God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's You're here because that voice inside you isn't happy with the choices everyone else wants you to make. It's not easy, but it's simple. Mr. Wheaton, are you ready? We're going to put God on trial. What do you say to people who don't believe? We disown him, he'll disown us. Do you think you're smarter than me, Wheaton? Do you think there's any argument you can make that I won't have an answer for? In that classroom, there is a God, and yet, I'm him. It doesn't seem quite fair to me. I can't help what the boy wants to make a fool of himself. Look, I know I am in the minority here, but I actually believe in God. I think you're here kind of hoping that this stuff is for real. I'm praying for you. To me, he's not dead. He's alive. What I want is for them to make their own choice. That's what God wants. You just want to ensnare them in your primitive superstition. Why do you hate God? Science supports his existence. You know the truth. So why do you hate him? Why do you hate God?